Rwanda National Neonatal Protocol, Hypervillirubinemia, by Dr. Boiza Mohire Ebolit. Introduction. Hello, I'm called Dr. Bugiza Muhire Ipolit. I'm a pediatrician, a member of Rwanda Pediatric Association. Today, I'm going to talk about hyperbilibinemia. Overview. By the end of this chapter, participants will be able to recognize risk factors for hyperbilibinemia in a full term and premature infant to understand how to assess hyperbilibinemia on a physical exam and initiate laboratory testing to determine, initiate, and manage appropriate treatment for hyperbilibinemia in the neonate. Pathophysiology, Assessment and Treatment Bilirubin is a yellow substance created as the body replaces old red blood cells. It is broken down by the liver and removed from the body in the stool. High levels of bilirubin, called hyperbilibinemia, makes the skin and the sclera of the eyes look yellow, a condition known as jaundice. Physiologic jaundice occurs in the first weeks of life due to a normalized in indirect bilirubin, while the newborn's metabolism and excretion system are still immature. It typically peaks at a bilirubin of about 12 mg per deciliter in the first weeks of life and then resolves spontaneously over the first month of life. Physiologic jaundice rarely occurs in the first day after birth and usually does not require treatment. Non-physiologic jaundice is a sign of more extreme hyperbilibinemia and involves a peak bilirubin greater than 12 mg per deciliter that often occurs earlier than with physiologic jaundice. It can be direct, indirect, or both. It is typically due to an underlying condition and requires further evaluation and treatment. Causes can include sepsis, hypothyroidism, and congenital syphilis. Neonatal hyperbilibinemia can be due to physiologic jaundice, non-physiologic jaundice, or both. Newborns increased breakdown of heme-containing red blood cells results an increased release of bilirubin. Therefore, conditions in which there is increased red blood cell breakdown, like hemorrhage or hemolysis, will exacerbate hyperbilibinemia. Newborns also have a decreased metabolism and the excretion of bilirubin. This is a complex process requiring both hepatic function and intestinal excretion. Conditions in which there is decreased metabolism, such as liver disease or decreased intestinal excretion of bilirubin, such as being NPO, nilipelos, on IV fluids, will also exacerbate hyperbilirubinemia. Risk factors for hyperbilirubinemia include prematurity, low birth weight, hemolysis, sepsis, and inborn errors of metabolism. Physiologic and non-physiologic jaundice peak area and higher in preterm, low birth weight infants due to decreased metabolism of bilirubin caused by immature hepatic function and decreased excretion of bilirubin due to decreased antero intake. High levels of bilirubin can cause brain damage, making prompt screening and treatment critical. Ideally, hyperbilirubinemia is diagnosed with a serum bilirubin measurement of total direct and indirect bilirubin. 
if it is not possible to measure serum bilirubin, a rough estimate can be made by physical examination. Sclera icterus correlates with a bilirubin of about 5 mg per deciliter. Jaundice of the palms and soles correlates with a bilirubin of greater than 20 mg per deciliter. Measure bilirubin if an infant has jaundice on day of life zero, is preterm with a jaundice on day of life one, or has jaundice below the chest at any age. Jaundice below the chest, especially on the palms and the soles, should cause concern. Consider additional factors that could worsen jaundice such as sepsis and hemolysis. Laboratory testing to assess for hemolysis and sepsis would include a full blood count, blood type of mother, combs, CRP, and blood culture. Whether hyperbilibinemia requires treatment depends on the degree of production, metabolism, and excretion of bilirubin. If there is evidence of moderate to severe jaundice by physical exam, start phototherapy regardless of serum bilirubin laboratory measurements. Jaundice of palms and soles is consistent with a bilirubin level of at least 20 mg per deciliter, which is equal to 340 micromole per liter. Use these tables to determine the phototherapy treatment and exchange transfusion thresholds. Bilirubin conversion is 1 mg per deciliter equals 17.1 micromole per liter. To start phototherapy, place the newborn in a bassinet or an incubator if the newborn is low birth weight less than 2 kg and an incubator if available. Ensure that the newborn is naked except for a diaper and wearing protective eyewear at all times. Position the phototherapy source at the appropriate distance above the newborn's body, which varies based on the type of light source. Phototherapy should be continuous without interruptions except during feedings. While newborns are receiving phototherapy, closely monitor temperature, hydration status, and lab test results. Check temperature every three hours, considering that the norm range is 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. Phototherapy causes increased evaporative fluid losses, so fluid intake should be increased by 20 ml per kg per day. Ensure that the newborn is feeding well, 7 or 8 times per day, or on IV fluids, and urinating at least 6 times per day. Dehydration hemoconcentrates bilirubin and should be avoided. If initial total bilirubin is over 20 mg per deciliter, repeat the measurement in 6 to 12 hours. If initial total bilirubin is less than 20 mg per deciliter, repeat in 12 hours if the newborn is not on full volume feeds or 24 hours if the newborn is on full volume feeds. There are additional measures that can be taken if a newborn's bilirubin levels continue to rise despite phototherapy. If this is the case and the newborn's bilirubin is still over 20 mg per deciliter, which is equal to 340 micromole per liter, feed the newborn under phototherapy rights rather than removing the newborn from the phototherapy during feedings. Ensure that the newborn is necked with no heart, blanket, or clothing covering his skin, ensuring that all skin is exposed to phototherapy. If the newborn is not already receiving IV fluid, 
starts an IV and provide hydration. Provide an additional 20 to 40 ml per kg per day to total fluid intake and consider whether IV fluid boluses may be necessary. Continue anterior intake pelos or by nasogastric tube to promote excretion of metabolized bilirubin. Cover the incubator wall with white sheet to create a reflective surface if needed, but be careful not to cover the ventilation system. If bilirubin exceeds 25 milligram per deciliter, which is equal to 425 micromol per liter and is not improving with phototherapy, apply the previous measures and give a 10 to 20 ml per kg normal serine bolus. Strongly consider nasogastric tube feeding until the newborn's bilirubin levels falls below 400 25 micromol per liter to either supplement oral intake or if the newborn is not orally feeding well, give roughly 150 ml per kg per day of milk via NG tube. Exchange transfusion is a treatment for extreme hyperbilibinemia and should be considered if bilirubin is above 425 microma per liter and continues to rise. Phototherapy should be discontinued once total serum bilirubin levels fall below treatment thresholds in the table. After discontinuing phototherapy, recheck total bilirubin levels after 24 hours. If bilirubin is above the treatment threshold, restart phototherapy. Remember the following additional considerations tre when treating a newborn with hyperbilibinemia. Treat other conditions which may worsen hyperbilibinemia. If sepsis is suspected, monitor FBC and initiate antibiotics. If hemolysis is suspected, monitor hemoglobin and assess for blood type incompatibility. Assess for and treat malaria. Case studies. The following case studies will help us to review this material. You are caring for baby Robert, a three-day-old term baby who is recovering from transient tachypnea of the newborn and is ready to go home today. When you are doing his discharge physical exam, you note that his sclera are jaundiced, but not his palms or soles. He otherwise looks well, now in room air, with a comfortable respiratory exam, feeding well, voiding and storing regularly. You send serum bilirubin level and it comes back at 170 micromoles per liter, which is 10 milligrams per deciliter. What should you do? This is a physiologic jaundice and does not require any therapy at this point. You should proceed with discharging the baby to home and as with any other patient, if the family observes progressive jaundice, this is a danger sign uh, that requires that they should seek further medical attention. The next patient is Sabina, a 1.9 kg, 32 week gestational girl who is four days old. She's being treated for a presumed perinatally acquired infection based on her mother having presented with signs of chorioamnionitis and her respiratory symptoms. She's on half volume feeds. On rounds today, you notice that her sclera are jaundiced. When you look at her palms and soles, they are also slightly jaundiced. You send off a serum bilirubin level and it comes back at 15 mg per deciliter. What should you do? 
This is non-physiologic jaundice. Based on the guidelines, you should start phototherapy. What should you do if you cannot run a bilirubin level given her history and her physical exam? You should start phototherapy because it is presumably quite high given the jaundice of her palms and soles. When should you measure the next level? According to the protocol, because the level is less than 20 and she is on half volume feeds, the next level should be measured in 12 hours. Once she is under the phototherapy rights, what other parts of her care should you focus on? You need to take her temperature every three hours and increase her fluid intake by 20 ml per kg per day to accommodate for the increased insensible losses of the lights. After being under phototherapy for two days, her bilirubin comes back at 10 mg per deciliter. What do you do? You discontinue the phototherapy and check another level once she has been off phototherapy for 24 hours. That level comes back at 9 mg per deciliter. What do you do? Her jaundice has been treated and you do not need to check it again unless you see physical exam findings concerning for jaundice. This chart summarizes the assessment and treatment of hyperbilibinemia. Summary. Having completed this chapter, you should now be able to recognize risk factors for hyperbilibinemia in full-term and premature infants. To understand how to assess for hyperbilibinemia on physical exam and initiate laboratory testing. Determine, initiate and manage appropriate treatment for hyperbilibinemia in the neonet. Keep in mind the following key points on hyperbilibinemia. Hyperbilibinemia occurs when an infant's bilirubin levels become too high, leading to jaundice. The major risk factors for hyperbilibinemia are prematurity, low birth weight, hemolysis, sepsis, inborn errors of metabolism. Assessment for hyperbilibinemia can be conducted by measuring serum bilirubin levels or by estimation based on the physical exam. Hyperbilibinemia is usually treated with phototherapy. Treatment thresholds are defined by serum bilirubin levels. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.